Hey, White, what's going on? Well, I want to go back in the way back machine Good. to when I heard somebody on the air tell me that they paid a couple of tuitions to college on trading yes. <laughs> options expiration on the OEX. Exactly. Uh, circa 19 yeah. or 2001, 2002. Right. Uh, and three. And there's just if you can get it right um, and you wait for the fastball down the center of the plate. How much uh, and how good these trades can be with a little bit of risk and a huge amount of reward. There, there is no doubt. And and what you hope for, folks, many times when Dave's talking like this, is you hope like there's a huge amount of movement on the Wednesday before the Friday, or on the Tuesday. It doesn't matter, right? You know what I mean? Or in this case, man, this is going to be really wild because like are we going to lay right at the highs? Well, who knows? But yeah, talk to us about what you're going to be teaching, Dave. Well, we're going to go through all the different things that I uh, used to put together a trade. We had a really good one in AMD going into options expiration last month. Um, but how you put all the different things together, uh, sometimes you can look at a thousand different indicators and all it does is confuse you. Uh, you can go with one and it's kind of hit or miss. I like to think of it as kind of an ensemble. You got uh, four or five uh, good players together and, uh, you know, they get they get to uh, playing real well together, and the, you've got a jazz ensemble, and you kind of go with uh, what moves you. You're not stuck with uh, the idea that you start with. Uh, the music can kind of move um, from then. But uh, I like to call it a kind of a jazzy ensemble of uh, the indicators that I use to put together the trade, which are things like uh, the options expiration chart. Um, and if you figure out where the most amount of money is going to be lost, uh, it gives you a kind of a good idea. I take that a lot further. Uh, in fact, uh, the first uh, big article I uh, presented was uh, Christmas of 2004 in Stocks and Commodities. I remember that. Uh, that was so cool. Setting man. strike price yeah. at probability and expiration. Yep. And a lot of the stuff still holds. The difference is that there really isn't an OEX to trade, so the numbers have kind of changed. Um, but they all kind of track back in, and we'll go through that. Uh, there's some other uh, things that uh, we'll be handling. Uh, let me find it here. Well, and you know what's um, so cool, folks? It's so cool about the option market that, that Dave does. So picture, you know, we're in the probability business, and, of course, inside the option market, you have premiums and you have decay. What we're talking here, though, is we're, we're realistically talking that Dave's going to be doing this on a Wednesday and he's going to be trading the Friday options, you know. But you're going to learn so much because the fact of the matter is that, yeah, there'll be a lot of them that are at the money. But then when Dave puts this together, as I, I just said, he's going to know where the options are. He uses his power vector. And that makes a huge difference. Uh, so over the course of the years, Dave, it's, it's pretty cool how you built on top of the, the aspect. And I feel like we always seem to have an edge. I mean... Because of the fact that, good, you know, you can get the options, but then, okay, we're looking at the rest of this to say, okay, hey, man, I think we got a little edge here. Right. And, two, you know, you can find options for a quarter or 20 cents. And if you're right just 50% of the time, if you get one that's a quarter and goes to a buck, you've got pretty much the makings of a long-term strategy that, you know, you're not winning a little bit all the time. But when you are winning, you're winning so much that you go – way out in front and that's kind of my model i want to try to be um as right as i can but i know that it, maybe i'm going to be right 50 percent of the time but like last month i'll have options that uh, maybe at 60 cents average that go to three bucks and those are the ones where you can really figure out that you don't have to be perfect uh you just have to be right on the long term and uh it's kind of turning uh the stock market on its head where you're the house now, and of course, they're the people coming in and, and betting at, at the last minute. So um, you get a, kind of a really nice uh, risk reward, uh, but you have to pick your battles. You have to be a rifle, not a shotgun, and uh, figure out how to do those. But yeah, uh, everything from my power uh, law vector indicator, which uh, in last month I was looking uh, uh, for a few things uh, and my uh, sector oscillators. Uh, they showed a bottom in the SMHs. Uh, I found AMD, and it was also making some really good uh, 
pictures. I thought it was going to go to 78 to 80. Uh, it went in like the 78.50 or something, but we were able to buy starting at around uh, 75 bucks um, and under, down to about 73 bucks, the 75 calls. And of course, it went up to uh, 78.30 or something like that. So, you know, you get 60 cents, you turn it into close to three bucks. Um, you can be wrong the next couple of times and still make a lot of good money. But uh, you've got to know. Uh, how it all starts and it starts on this Wednesday with everybody going Delta neutral that's when option market makers start hedging all their bets to make sure they don't lose their shirts yes because it now costs them more money uh, than they than normally they would make so it's kind of I say it's kind of like uh, an arms dealer starts selling arms to both sides because he doesn't want the war to be over he they, wants he, to, they can kill he, us. No, I'm with you. Uh, they're, they're, he wants to continue it on. That's right. But uh, that, and of course, uh, I have uh, uh, some other pro pro uh, proprietary stuff. Uh, let me get it here. Uh, I wanted to pop it up. Uh, I have what are called options expiration charts. Yes. And not only the number that they point at, but the way that they point at it in the forms, there's about eight major patterns that I look at. And they'll tell you uh, whether or not you should look at that as more of a range or this thing's really pointing uh, to pin at expiration. In fact, we talked a lot about it on Friday shows about Apple pinning yes. uh, over and over every option expiration uh, to within a lot of times 20 cents of the biggest loss that there could be. And that's kind of what you're looking for. You're looking for a good indication that the option market makers, people involved in the market, want to push this thing around a little bit because there's so much money to be made. Right now on the uh, S&P 500, yes. um, a minimum of $2 billion uh, is uh, going to be paid out right now at expiration. Now that'll move around. Uh, they'll start buying and selling them and that number will move. But that really starts on Wednesday when they go delta neutral. And from then on, you can start seeing what the option market makers believe. And, of course, they're the best traders that there are on Wall Street. If they weren't, they'd be broke. And, folks, it's very easy to come into this workshop. You just come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see right into featured content, the path of least resistance. You just hit that button. You can get the path for one month for $119, six months for $599, a year for $985. They all come with a 30-year money-back guarantee. Bottom line, just get in, get the newsletter. It's a great newsletter. You're going to get a great education. Um, and if you want to understand how Dave looks at the option market, it's really cool, man. You've been doing it a long time, um, and you're always looking for an edge. Dave, thank you so much. Have a great one, safe one. We look forward to showing tomorrow.